Jurassic. Hey everybody, Dr. O here. And this is where we're going to talk about how muscles recover. So we talked about how muscles function, we talked about why they fatigue, but then what happens during the muscle recovery period? The first thing to note is it's not a quick process. It can take hours or even days for muscles to fully recover from intense activity. Now that part of that's going to be metabolic recovery, some is going to be structurally, right? When you lift weights, when you're physically active, you're damaging muscles, but you're really doing it on purpose. The, your body's response to that damage is what makes you bigger, stronger, and faster. So during this recovery period, first of all, oxygen is back, right? If you were just lifting weights or doing something very intense, you created a temporary anaerobic environment. Your body didn't have enough oxygen. You couldn't get enough oxygen to the muscle cells, so oxygen disappeared. And that's why that's why those conditions are called anaerobic conditions. And now oxygen is once again available. Your mitochondria can kick back on. So, but, you, but during this time when you didn't have enough oxygen, you were generating lactic acid. So a big part of the muscle recovery period is dealing with lactic acid. So, the la so your mitochondria basically turned off temporarily. They're, they've woken back up, let's put it that way. And then now you have this lactic acid to deal with. So lactic acid that was being produced by your muscle cells during anaerobic glycolysis is now going to be taken via your bloodstream to the liver, where it's going to be converted back into pyruvic acid which is one of the, the key steps in your metabolism there. And this is going to then be turned into glucose, and that can recharge your muscles' glycogen reserves. So while your muscles are recovering, you can actually take this lactic acid that was produced during physical activity and turn it back into glucose where it can be stored as glycogen, so you're refilling your glycogen reserves. So this removal of lactic acid from your muscle cells, sending it to your liver, where it can be reconverted to pyruvic acid and glucose, is called the Cori cycle. So let's go ahead and look at that. So Cori, C-O-R-I. The Cori cycle, you'll notice it's not, um, it, there's quite a metabolic investment here. Uh, during glycolysis, we only generated two ATP in the muscles. And it's going to take six ATPs to actually turn that lactic acid, that lactate, back into glucose. So it seems like a pretty poor, uh, pretty poor investment. You're going to spend six ATP to get two, but here's here's the reason the Cori cycle is important. It actually shifts the metabolic burden from the muscles to the liver. So yes, you're not you're not gaining a, extra ATP here, but what's what you're keeping from happening, you're keeping lactic acidosis or lactic acid from building up in the muscles. Lactic acid can escape the muscles, get into the blood, go to the liver, and be turned back into glucose. So you're preventing, so the main benefit of the Cori cycle is you're preventing lactic acidosis in your muscle cells. And that's going to allow your muscles to continue to function in those anaerobic environments and hopefully keep you alive if you're climbing a tree to save your life or running from a bear or something. So that's the key thing here. It's not a great payoff, but it shifts that burden. It shifts that burden of lactic acid from the muscles to your liver. And that's that's the really key thing here. The Cori cycle is very important. It's actually actually a more important substrate for gluconeogenesis, the produce, production of glucose from a non-carbohydrate source than, than even from your food. So even if you're on like a lower carb diet or something like that. So this, this Cori cycle can be used to then replenish the glucose and glycogen reserves in your muscles. So while your muscles are recovering, now your mitochondria can take over the burden of making ATP. This extra, this lactic acid that was being produced has now been shuttled to the liver, turned back into glucose, and now it can come back and replenish your glucose and glycogen stores in your muscles. So that's a really, really important point of the uh, metabolic uh, repair process and the replenishment of, of muscle energy reserves. The last thing to note is the Cori cycle works really well once you're done with physical activity. So this process where you have to deal with all this extra lactic acid, repair your muscles, and regenerate this glycogen reserves is going to take extra oxygen. So maybe another term you want to be familiar with is the idea of oxygen debt. So once you're done exercising, you're still breathing heavily for a while, your metabolism can be elevated for days because of the report, repair, repair process. But the reason you keep breathing heavily after exercise for prolonged periods of time is because you're repaying the oxygen debt. That period of time you went without oxygen led to all this lactic acid being produced. Now, you ha now you're going to need extra oxygen to recover from that exercise session. So that's what the oxygen debt is or repaying the oxygen debt. That's why your oxygen or your breathing stays elevated after exercise. Okay, and then your metabolism stays elevated for hours to days for the reasons I've already mentioned. All right, so that is a big part of the muscle recovery process. I hope this helps. Have a wonderful day. Be blessed.